You clicked on this video because you're curious. And obviously, you want to make 1500% profit. Let's start. So, I'm what we call a Lincoln Logs baby. Or Legos. I always loved building things and putting things together. Especially those little cabins with the Lincoln Logs. Really? Do you have any two inch screws? Yeah. Oh, you're on camera. Smile. Of course, it would work out to where I would marry my wife. Miss Green Thumb. Or as others call her, the Animal Whisperer. It was a match made in heaven. You see, her and I go together like this book match. So I've got this idea running around in my head and I've got this wood that hasn't been used and it's left over from a project. Hmm. Assuming that you already have a couple tools and some scrap wood lying around the shop will determine the amount of profit you'll make on this project. So let's begin by sketching this one up. We're gonna be making a knife holder. And these things right now are a hot seller on all the online platforms. This one's for the boys. Ooh, dang, I think I just broke it. Uh, yeah, we'll just set this one aside. <laughs> so we'll take our biggest knife to figure out how wide we need to make this project. I'm sort of winging it, just kind of designing as I go with that little sketch up. But this should work for most knife sets. Minus one. Our two bigger pieces get a 45 degree bevel at the bottoms. The bottom piece will receive two bevels at 45 degrees as well. And for the top, we're going to do something similar to a box joint. Now, with all these ideas running through my head, I went through a couple different designs on this and settled for the minimalist approach. Sometimes it's good to be a minimalist. Now, your dimensions may be a little different depending on the knife set that you have. Mine is gonna work out to be eight and three quarters long to square on both of the bigger pieces. And they are seven and a quarter wide. So we'll take our bottom over to our miter saw and get it cut down to seven and a quarter. <laughs> In today's economy, Wood can get outrageously expensive. So every opportunity that you have, make sure to save any kind of wood you have and don't throw it straight to the burn pile. To make sure our dados are consistent with each other, we'll double side stick tape the front and the back together. If I had a nickel for every time I've heard someone say, who would pay that much money for something like this? Well, I'd be rich. To achieve our dados, we'll take our miter gauge and screw a sacrificial fence to the miter gauge along with the second fence with the box joint jig applied to it. Using a setup block, we'll set the depth of the blade to a half inch. You'd actually be surprised what people are willing to pay for handcrafted items, especially when it comes to home decor. I know I've been surprised. What starts off as a hobby, for most, can actually become a lucrative business in all reality. So now that we've got our first dados cut, I've got five knives all together. I pulled in a half inch from each side and cut my first dado. And then I did that box joint method for my next one on both sides. 
So from our second dado from each side, we're gonna pull over one inch and that will be where our other dados go. And we'll go ahead and get these four dados cut and then lay out for our last dado. If you don't have any hardwoods laying around the shop, no worries. Check to see if you have a cabinet shop nearby as they're usually willing to give away their scrap material. Now for our last set of dados, we're gonna pull in an inch from this side as well as this side, and that will line up perfectly. Dead center. Right then. Now that we've got our dados cut, we're gonna take this piece of quilted maple and rip it down to two inches. And then we'll resaw it to fit each dado we cut, creating the slot for the knife to set in. First, I need to make a push block and the bandsaw in the miter box will make quick work of that. Now meet me at the bandsaw. We're gonna resaw our maple into eighth inch strips for the top of the knife block. Once we get those strips ripped down to an eighth inch, we'll take and cut them the same length that the bottom is wide, which is at two and five eighths. We'll need 10 of them all together. We gonna add a dab of glue, add a dab of glue, add a dab of glue, add a dab of glue. Once we get it glued up, we'll temporarily add two of these eighth inch strips that we cut to help keep it square while it dries. We'll set it to the side, let this dry up, and I'll meet you back here as soon as it's done drying. Well, I've decided while this was drying that two inches was just a bit much. What I'm actually gonna do is cut these in half at the bandsaw real quick. But first, I gotta change the blade. While we change out the blade, I figured what better time to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you like the content so far. If you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a member today. There are three levels, each including its own perks that you can join, so read them carefully and consider becoming a member today of the Bearded Viking Woodworks channel. All right, now we'll get it all sanded down, put this thing together, and we'll have this thing finished up. So for all you DIYers who want to become full-time woodworkers, you don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great. This project is a great beginner's project and is a profit machine. 1500% profit each time I make it. So let's go ahead and slap some finish on this thing. I'm just gonna go ahead with shellac because I'm not gonna spray the insides. Plus, shellac is food safe anyhow. But we're gonna slap some finish on this bad boy and we're gonna crunch some numbers and show you how to make 1500% profit using some simple math.
Well, that wasn't cool. But at least I know my construction was sturdy. <laughs> I better not put it on this phone, huh? Jesus, tighten up. There we go. Try this one more time. Rock stars. So let me show you how to get 1500% profit every time. Come on in. Now, all you gotta do is some simple math. To get your profit percentage, you wanna take your profit divided by your cost and then multiply that by 100. So in this case, I'm gonna be listing this at 80 dollars we'll divide that by the cost which about five bucks worth of material and finish that equals 16 and then we'll times 16 by 100 and that my friends is 1600 percent profit all day